You don't get the first question this time, though, Scott. You know. I, 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 I'm going to push back here. It's okay. <laughs> we yield that to the person on the phone. We'll, we'll, we'll but the, the person who stays gets the, the last question, question Scott. <laughs> <coughs> Let us know when you're ready. And are you all set? I'm ready. You're ready. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very so, uh, welcome, everybody. We, my name is Seth Goodall. I'm the Senate Majority Leader. And uh, with me is uh, Senator Troy Jackson, the Assistant. Senate Majority Leader and, of course, Representative McCabe, the House Assistant Majority Leader. And we're here to answer your questions. There's been obviously a lot of interest in today's uh, statements by the Governor. And we want to make sure that uh, the press has the availability to ask us any questions that you so choose. And uh, here we are. So we'll turn it over to any questions that you may have. All right. <laughs> What's your reaction to the Governor's uh, comments this morning? The governor uh, is, seems to be fo focused more on uh, striking a tone of do-nothing politics rather than focusing on uh, the job of governing. We need to make sure that we look at uh, all our responsibilities up here, more than just one issue. Um, and I think that uh, the notion that we're going to govern by threat is not the way to run this state, and we need to work together. This uh, fact sheet talks about you guys paying back the hospitals. Like you still owe them a half a billion in hospitals, laying people off, you know, cutting services, things like that. Could the argument be made that it's not happening fast enough? Look, Democrats are committed to paying back the hospital debt, and the liquor contract uh, gives an opportunity to focus on that and work on that, and we are committed to that. Um, we have paid back millions and millions over it. I believe $3.7 billion to the hospitals, and we're committed to doing that um, and paying off the rest of that. That being said, we have a lot of other priorities in the state. We're underfunding education. Um, the governor has proposed a $400 million tax increase or a shift, depending on which way you look at it, to municipalities. So we need to balance all the interests of the state. So it's like you can't really afford the main care program as it's currently constituted. Excuse me? It sounds like you can't really afford the main care program as it's currently constituted, then? If you can't afford to pay the hospitals what you owe them, wouldn't it be prudent to not offer as many services or do something along those lines? If you have all these other... Well, this is more about how the reconciliation, how we reconciled payments in the past. In 2009, we fixed this problem, so we're making sure that we pay as we go. Um, in the past, there was an accounting issue that caused problems with paying back to hospitals. We fixed that, and we're committed to paying our bills going forward, and we need to make sure we pay back to hospitals. So Are you positively shutting the door to what the governor has proposed? You will not accept his plan as it's put forward in the LD? Uh, no, that is not correct. We want to make sure we have a thoughtful process around how to renegotiate, how to uh, go forward on the liquor contract. There are many ideas and many varying proposals about how to do that. The governor has his plan on how to move forward on the liquor contract. I have submitted my own plan. He wants to have the state take back over the liquor contract. I believe that the state should continue privatizing that. But that is a separate conversation of what to do with the money. If we don't get the liquor contract right, then we will have problems with what to do with the money. Those must be separate conversations. This is not a dictatorship. I mean, we have, this is a thoughtful process that the legislature always does on every bill. And this one happens to be really, really important. And it's, it's important to do it right. And just to have someone impose his will on the entire legislature uh, is not the way this is built and operates. This is a priority. I, the, the governor's office released um, some timetables on how fast bills were moving to committee, and this bill um, on the liquor contract and pay, paying back the hospital debt is looks like it's on the sort of back burner. You know, that is a very uh, inaccurate statement that the governor's office and certain Republicans are saying. The chairs of the committee um, on Wednesday of last week scheduled the hearing of that bill. The governor's office was informed in person by me the following day that the two bills were going to be heard together on March 11th, and that is because it will create a much more efficient, faster process to have this deliberation. And we are committed to that, and we're going to be deliberating and 
front of the Veterans and Legal Affairs Committee a week from Monday. This is a priority. Um, what bills? What bills have currently gone to the governor's desk that he is now presumably going to veto? Do you guys have a list? Is there anything of you know major import that you can think of? I, there's some bills that are due to come up for enactment next week, but as far as uh, from what I've seen this afternoon doing some research, I don't, I'm not aware of anything that's there that will be vetoed. There's some unanimous committee reports that are actually uh, due to reach his desk at some point. Um, but it seems like he's willing to uh, have that threat go even towards his own bills. So, you know, today we're sitting here and we're calling on Republicans to reject this do-nothing politics. This does nothing. It, 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 it just derails the process. And, you know, we have important work to do, whether it's issues of domestic violence, issues of, uh, you know, regulations in our schools. And we really need to move forward. We need to work together. So we're calling on the Republicans to just reject this veto spree at this point in time. So there's no, there's no specific legislation that's going to be on his desk that you're concerned about? The committees have been passing legislation out unanimously. <laughs> and they're going through both bodies unanimously. And those bills will, will quickly be landing on the governor's desk. If he chooses to veto those bills, it's just an indication that he doesn't want any progress. He wants to have government stand still. And as he said, shut it down. Can you... Uh, did, excuse me, did, did he say shut government down? He said we might as well pack up and go home, or something similar to that. But you're, you're not, are you suggesting that he, that he's urging a government shutdown? I mean, that's a loaded term, as you know. Well, the Republicans have used that term. Last week, the governors were saying, uh, excuse me, the Republicans were talking about shutting down government. And this week, the government is saying that we ought to just go home and pack it up. To me, they seem related. We're keeping our focus. We're going to keep working together. We we're going to reach out to the Republicans. Just this morning, on this Joint Workforce Committee, we were doing things in a bipartisan nature. The spirit of that committee is the spirit of almost all the committees. We're focused on getting the work done for the people of Maine. A question about the, again, back to the hospital uh, debt in particular. I, I've asked a version of this before, I believe. Uh, is there something unique about the hospital debt as opposed to any other bills? If you had a, if you had a bill for the heating oil for the capital complex uh, that had built up over time, probably not as big as that, although it's pretty big, you'd pay. Uh, is there something unique about about the hospital debt that you look at differently? Well, the hospital debt is a priority to Democrats, just as it is to the governor. Just as making sure that we fund education for our kids is a priority for Democrats. And I'm sure it's a priority for certain Republicans. The notion is we have to balance these interests, and we've said over and over again, we are committed to working together with the Republicans pay off this hospital debt. It's a much more complicated situation than just signing a bill in the law and it passing it through committee as the governor implies. We have to be thoughtful in this process. We have to balance all the interests. Senator, doesn't going along with the governor's proposal really tie the hands of the legislature for the next 10 years that you won't have another opportunity to renegotiate this contract for a 10-year period? The governor is proposing a 10-year contract, a 10-year process, and it does tie the hands, meaning it sets aside revenue. He sets aside uh, a process where he wants to borrow from Wall Street in order to pay off the hospital debt. Um, we believe that that ought to be a separate conversation and we got to get the liquor contract right in the first place. Um, we need to make sure we get this right. There's a lot of opportunity there, hundreds of millions of dollars to pay our bills, including the hospitals. And I got to say, AJ, I mean, I was here 10 years ago and I watched that play out, and, and, and no one was, was making these outrageous threats of shutting the state down or, or not vetoing bills. But the fact is, is that was rash, and we didn't get a good deal for the state then. And I'm not going to be intimidated by Governor LePage and sign something that's not good for the state of Maine now. And I want to pay the hospitals, so I, I don't want to have anyone accuse me of trying to sell the hospitals. But we're going to get maximize this contract and get the money out of it so we can pay things like education, revenue sharing, which they want to cut, because those things are going to hurt our, our constituents too, and I'm not going to be threatened by him on this. Can you talk a little bit about um, beyond the uh, not privatizing the, uh, the liquor contract? What else is, do you find troublesome about the governor's proposal? And the borrowing piece that you already mentioned. Can we get into some more specifics? The governor's liquor contract has serious flaws in it. One, the governor wants to take over the state operation of liquor. That's what the governor has stated. 
He has yet to provide a detailed business plan for a three to four hundred million dollar business. He has not fixed the inequity with our agency liquor stores, our retail partners. He does not put an implementation timeline into law that would require um, the state either taking it over or putting it out to contract. He has some serious flaws in what he does with the revenue, some constitutional questions that need to be resolved. He creates a new mechanism. And frankly, he wants to borrow from Wall Street in, a, in order to pay off debt. Mainers need to know how much that's going to cost. Our current private entity in the private sector has approximately 10 people working on this, in addition to a wholesale uh, warehousing and delivery operation. He claims he can do this without adding any more headcount. If that's the case, justify it to us. Just as we would in front of a board of directors, I would hope he provide a business plan for them. That's all we're asking. We need to see the details. An open public hearing, which is what we're going to have. So, you know, the other thing is that we are committed to this being the best deal for Maine. You know, and that's really what comes about with the committee work, it comes about with the public process, and that's really what we need to focus on. You know, these are distractions that take away from the fact that, you know, revenue sharing is being cut, we're not funding our schools at the appropriate level, and there's other work that we need to do. So, but Senator Goodall, if the governor comes back and answers your questions um, about the liquor contract, to your satisfaction, do you, is, are, is, can the door still be open to um, this proposal and tying that together with the hospital? Then? Look, I am a reasonable person. Can I be more than happy to work with the governor on resolving this issue? He wants to take over the state operation. I believe it ought to be privatized. Prior to 2003, complaints about our state wholesale liquor business were rampant. Deliveries often didn't occur, uh, even once a week at times, some of our more rural stores. Since that time, these problems have been corrected. Complaints are basically uh, non-existent. We have deliveries of twice per week. But that being said, the governor needs to reach out and work with us. I'm looking forward to that discussion. But as you can see from your questions today, this is a very complicated matter. And it needs to be separated from what we do with all the revenue. We're, we're focused on having that conversation this session and having it ongoing, starting, and we have been having it with what to do with the revenue. But that being said, we got to get it right. It is, it, now, uh, my impression is that, uh, I guess, two questions. One, this bill is not, there would still be a contract negotiation that would happen separately long after this bill was passed, correct? So you would not be signing off on an actual contract? We're focused on making sure this is a public process and that my bill proposes to having it going out to bid and doing so by, by July 1. Is the does governor's bill proposed The governor's different? bill has no timeline. And I would argue, as one of the flaws in the governor's bill is, or questions need to be answered, is when will that money be available for the hospitals? We need to make sure we know that answer. And that deals with borrowing from Wall Street. This is a complicated matter. But the notion that the governor wants to shut down government or implying that he'll do that, or that he's going to veto every bill, which is basically the same result over this one issue, it's not good governing. Maine elected us to come here and lead. He elected the, they elected the governor to do the same. We need to do that together. That's the point. Today's comments are very disappointing. It's a distraction. But that being said, all of us, along with the legislature, I hope are going to join Democrats in moving forward and doing our job. I hope the governor joins us in that. Senator Goodall, has, have you had anything beyond conversations regarding what uh, you had planned to do with increased revenue from a liquor deal? Well, as you've heard today, we want to use uh, that revenue to pay our debts, and that includes the hospitals, as well as looking at other uh, monies that we owe. We are owing the same amount of money, almost, to education. We have our roads and bridges that are deteriorated, water and sewer and infrastructure. And then we're talking about putting ba people back to work whether that's on workforce development programs or whether that's on research and development. This is worth hundreds of millions of dollars. We have to get it right. Would any of the revenue go towards um, the shortfall in the DHHS budget? Because we're hearing back channels that that's the intent, really, of the liquor contract money would be to expand or backfill those sh shortfalls in the DHHS budget. Look, I mean, if the governor wants to sit down and have a good conversation about this, both sides can walk away pleased with the outcome. 
there's a lot of flexibility in what you can do with that money as long as you abide by the Constitution. Or would it be your intent to use some of that revenue for the Department of Health and Human Services? We haven't had that discussion yet. Should that be part of the discussion? Sure. Okay. Today, since the Governor's comments this morning, have you had any communication with Republican leadership about this issue? I've been working in the committee doing my job. I can answer that. I actually met with Representative Fredette, and I believe that he'll be issuing a statement as well this afternoon. And, you know, that's another opportunity, I guess, for, for you folks to ask them. You know, hopefully they'll join us in rejecting, um, you know, these do-nothing politics and reject this uh, this veto spree. I have a memorial that I'm handing off to Senator Thibodeau for Harold Bushard's funeral, so that's the only conversation I've had for today. We'll take one more question. The uh, Representative Goodall has... Uh, you've said you've said a couple of times that the governor wants to take over the liquor business or take it back. I guess is your, your suggestion to the department. Do you know if in fact that's what they'll propose? The governor has said that that he wants to take back the liquor business. You hear from his administration varying comments. All I know is that his bill says that it will take over the management and operation, and that it may issue certain contracts. So he clearly is taking back. My bill says we ought to continue the privatization. The word speak for itself. Anyone who has temper tantrums like that probably shouldn't be giving out contracts to anyone. Did, did you have any conversations with um, Mr. Reed? Because he's, and I know he's come to the um, appropriations committee several times to explain the governor's plan, but have you guys had individual meetings with him? Uh, I sat down with him uh, two days ago. And was it not clear that it may have continued. Uh, our understanding of the plan in the press is that it would still be a private situation. It's just a matter of rebidding it to get a better deal. Look, he's talking about issuing contracts um, in terms of the delivery, in terms of administration, and he said in front of the committee it may be one, two, or three different contracts. Or the state may reserve the right to hold back and operate some of those functions itself. The governor, which the buck stops with him, this is his administration, says he wants to take back over the liquor business. And the bill says it will take over the operation and management. Well, what can I rely on? The legislation and what the governor is saying. Okay, thank you. Thank you.